all right guys welcome back to another video i just want to talk a little bit about the tank uh, 300s engine i think that's quite an important component and uh, gwm do guarantee the engine for a very long time in certain markets um, you get up to a million kilometers which is kind of probably a marketing gimmick but it's there and uh, up to 10 years or a million kilometers whichever comes first now that, that is backing them themselves very very highly um, in terms of the engine right but that warranty also goes with the entire drivetrain especially in south africa if you go with thorpe um, haval they will guarantee or there's a warranty on the drivetrain the engine the transmission the diffs the, the diffs and the diff locks and the turbo and all of that type of thing so a uh, full comprehensive warranty uh, i think for the first owner for for 10 years so that's pretty comprehensive and that's why i just wanted to have this video to quickly talk about the engine so this is the engine model here the w g w e 20 cb um it uh here's all the specs it was uh produced uh, since 2020 it has capacity of 1967 output can vary um i think that the output in the um in the HEV model is up to 180 kilowatts so I think that's just a tuning thing so I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure the engine is capable of that um, in the ultra petrol model um, you can see here it has a cast iron block aluminium head and here's all those other features uh, the, the cylinder bore piston stroke etc it has double overhead cam um, it has a timing chain and it has uh, DVVT which is dual valve timing so just like all the Toyotas came out with VVTIs and all those type of things this engine is bang up to date with modern technology in terms of the input uh, camshaft and the uh, uh, exhaust camshaft being able to rotate and then thereby variably adjust the um, the uh, valve openings it has a twin scroll turbocharger and uh, and that's all of that and this is the fuel consumption that they quote here um yeah i think in depending in what car is fitted for here this is for the tank um you know highway driving uh eight liters per hundred i doubt you can get that um combined 10.7 it's a little bit uh optimistic um and city i think it's a little bit he heavier than that but be that as it may i think it's a very very good engine uh, so far and it has been tested uh, to have a lifespan according to them of 250,000 kilometers which if i look at other manufacturers um, that they slightly less than that between 200 and 230 but yeah i could be wrong i haven't done that much extensive research but it's good to know that they have tested the engine to to be reliable and capable up to 250,000 kilometers which is pretty good um, and that's why I think that the, the way the engine has been designed, it's not too highly strung. Um, it is built uh, a little bit old school, maybe, in terms of um, they wanted to make an engine that can last a long time and be used in a lot of vehicles for a long time. So I think it's just one of those engines that uh, will probably improve over time. But as it stands, it's, it's more uh, a robust build, and that is what they were going for. You can see here so far uh, the disadvantages of the engine. The first first release when it was still called Way before it became Tank, uh, a Tank brand on its own, uh, they complained that uh, the crossovers in those days uh, had a oil burner, so it was burning a little bit of oil. But in 2021, that was quickly resolved, um, and there's no such cases, or at least very rare cases. So, if you buy a Tank these days, uh, especially in South Africa, we only got them in 2024, um, you probably won't have any problem with with oil burning. Uh, like all direct inject engines it does suffer from carbon deposits so all direct injection engines basically will have a carbon deposit uh, on the inlet valves and that is because other older engines uh, what they used to do is you have a fuel injection system or a carburetor system and injects the fuel into the engine via an intake uh, past the inlet valves and then that then um, uh, cleans the, the valves from, from carbon deposits. Now with modern cars, modern engines, what they've done to get more precise 
um, fuel injection. So they inject directly into the uh, uh, combustion chamber and therefore the fuel which has cleaning properties does not go past the intake valves. Coupled with that is when they recirculate some uh, exhaust gases from, uh, from the exhaust, they recirculate that back into the intake to burn off more hydrocarbons. That means that you're putting uh, more sludge and carbon and it's coating the, the valves. Um, it coats the valves, the inlet valves, and then obviously that adds to more sluggish performance. But that happens over many, many thousands, hundred thousand kilometers. Um, it was particularly bad in the first uh, with engines uh, from Audi. Uh, they were the first people with, uh, to manufacture to produce the FSI um, engine, which was a direct injection. They had a lot of problems with, with, with closets. And so it's not a new thing. It's not a thing. It's not an, uh, a problem only with the brand. Uh, I'd say almost every brand does have a problem with uh, carbon deposits on the inlet valves. But you can get a carbon clean eventually. But it really, it, it, I've never experienced that personally on any of the cars that I've had with the technology. So it's not something to worry about. And then it says it's worth noting that uh, the original air filter poorly protects against sand. So yeah, maybe you just want to check that, make sure that the... Um, the, uh, I think that was perhaps on the the way. I'm not sure if it was the way or the tank, but you know you can have a look at your airbox and just make sure that uh, it does it does seal. So that's not 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 an issue. So yeah, doesn't look like there's any problems with the engine itself. And if you want to go on to the drivetrain, oh, I just want to bring this to your attention as well. One so they are already now producing more than 10 million engines uh, from the GWM which means that they have you know, a lot of experience producing engines. And so far, if you look at all the engines that they've produced, you're not getting a lot of issues with them from the research that I've done. So yeah, pretty pretty good on that front. And if you look here, uh, just want to look at the drivetrain. So it has a, a ZF 8-speed uh, transmission. So ZF uh, make gearboxes. They specialize in that and they supply... I think Mercedes, um, they also supply BMW and many, many, I think Jaguar even, and many other car manufacturers with um, the 8-speed transmissions or the other variants that, that have come out. Even the Ford Everest that my wife uh, drives, uh, that has a 6-speed ZF transmission. Um, they're some of the best in the world, and the Tank 300 is fitted with the, one of the latest generation 8-speed um automatic transmissions and i can tell you it's very smooth it works very well it's responsive absolutely no no issues with that so that is very good on the other hand uh, you have the differential locks they're all supplied by eaton which if you know about um about eaton they basically make uh, things like uh, superchargers and differential locks and those type of things so it's also a very well-known brand that's used in many, many, many German and Toyota or uh, Japanese brands. Again, they've picked the, the best, um, the best uh, parts for the Tank 300. So one of the only things really that is is the the differentials and the low range gearboxes eaten. The diff, uh, sorry, the uh, gearbox diff, and the engine is a Tank uh, or GW specific brand. So yeah, if you look at the underpinnings of the vehicle, very reliable. Um, and uh, proven technology that they've brought into the Tank 300. Uh, the, just another note, the Tank 300 also has a variant called the Tank 330, which has a twin-turbo V6 hybrid. Uh, that would be amazing. That would be really amazing. Um, it shows here that the Tank 330, when they were released in limited numbers, was sold in out in six seconds. Uh, that is going to be a beast of a, of a vehicle. And uh, yeah, I hope it one day comes to South Africa. But yeah, not sure if that's going to happen. I just want to show you here the Thor Paval uh, warranty. It has a 10-year, 1 million kilometer warranty on new and demo vehicles. This is an extended warranty program that covers major components of the vehicle, including engine, transmission, turbo assembly, transfer box, differentials, and differential lock. So you get pretty much a comprehensive warranty if you buy it um, from Haval uh, Thorpe. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much um, going to put your mind at ease in terms of if you want to keep the car, the vehicle for a long time, you have this, this warranty cover so you can go out and 
really torture it and it's going to last a long time. I believe it's going to last a long time. Let's get away with these ads here. Okay. All right. So just look at other brands. If you look at SUVs with the worst reliability, you'll see that uh, they're all known brands. Let's have a look here. Okay. So you see you've got Ford, you've got Hyundai, Hyundai, Jeep, Jeep and Volkswagen Tiguan. Mid-size SUVs, Chevy, GMC, Volkswagen again. And then you've got uh, the Mazda CX-9. Didn't know that. Um, Mid-size again. So as you can see on this report, there's no no Chinese cars. No Ch worst SUVs you can you can buy. This is a cherry-picked article. I don't know when this was released. This was June. Yeah, it's fairly recent. June 25, 2020, uh, 2024. Where was this? This is I don't know what this is, but. Yeah, basically you can go and have a look and see if uh, the Chinese brands are in the top 10 worst or reliable, uh, most reliable or unreliable vehicles. And uh, yeah, let me know if you find any articles like that, but I haven't found any yet. Um, here's more engines that die before they uh, before they should, before 50,000 miles. Um, yes, so again, you've got a lot of these which uh, which as you can see they are not Chinese but yeah you can have a look at these videos this is just the technology I was telling about the DVVT engine dual variable valve timing engine um, it can adjust its valve timing based on the engine's operating conditions so that gives you the best low down, low end torque as well as high end performance and also helps with emissions and all this type of things so it has that technology in it and then a a cousin Let's call it a cousin of the GWM 2-liter turbo engine has won the top 10 engines of, of China. And you know, China makes many, many, many uh, different vehicles, they have been making for a while. And uh, the GWM has won the engine of the year. So um, yeah, and as I think these engines are put into the uh, Haval H6. So that is a very reliable engine and it's kind of similar to the one in the tank. Not saying that you know they're both the same, but yeah, just showing you that GWM is leading in terms of uh, combustion engines in China. How does that rank up to to the rest of the world? Well, so far it looks like it actually ranks up pretty well as compared to the rest of the world um, in terms of you know if you look at Volkswagen, you look at uh, uh, Toyota. Toyota's been pretty good with the engines, but Volkswagen had many issues. Volkswagen, Audi and uh, Kia have had some issues so yeah so far looking pretty good and just finally I just want to show that uh, they will be releasing a, a tank 300 with a diesel engine I think the uh, the P series uh, the P500 the new uh, GWM P500 Bucky does have the 2.4 liter diesel engine in already so it looks like they're going to be putting that into the uh, the tank 300 and that's going to release in South Africa sometime soon what while I think it's a condition and I think it'll attract more buyers to, to it because of the fuel consumption and maybe lower down torque or more torque uh, what, what I think it might distract from is the uh, smoothness of the tank 300 for me the petrol engine is extremely smooth uh, at a, at, there's no vibration there's no the clangy noise that you get from a diesel engine um, it's very smooth it's power delivery is very smooth uh, it just in terms of making the car feel a lot more luxurious i think it does that and adding a um, diesel engine into it might take away from that a bit which which i would be hesitant to go towards now that i've i've been driving the the petrol edition so yeah we'll see but uh, it's it, either, either way it's probably going to attract a lot of um a lot of new buyers to to the tank 300 which is great for for the brand and especially in south africa and uh yeah fuel consumption will definitely be be less um probably i'd say maybe around eight liters per hundred depending on what well, combined cycle maybe eight to nine liters per hundred combined cycle which is which is a lot better than the the petrol but yeah the petrol for me is uh not a not really an issue it's something i've, I've come to accept and I just appreciate the car so much uh, for it uh, in terms of its ride, um, the power delivery, 
Um, I mean, I went to the dunes the other day and the, the vehicle actually, because it's a petrol, I could rev, rev the stink out of it and absolutely performed well in the dunes. Um, plenty of power, you know, low range, third gear, um, up a dune, no problem. I'll be releasing that video soon, so you can have a look at that. But yeah, it's amazing power. Um, you know, it's not too much power, but it definitely has enough power and it definitely has to get up and go when needed. Um, so yeah, that's all I want to say about uh, the engine uh, and try drivetrain that you can be rest assured that you have something that is built with quality underpinnings um, and longevity in mind. So yeah, no no need to worry about uh, about uh, the GWM tank uh, having issues. Um, so yeah, that's all I want to say. Cool. Uh, like, subscribe, please, and yeah, let me know any comments in the um, comment section below. And have a good one. Cheers.